In this video, we're going to take a look at using inserts in Pro Tools. Pro Tools allows you to have up to 10 inserts per track. These can be used for internal plug-in processors that are powered by your computer, or for external hardware processors. Here you can see I have a very basic Pro Tools session open, with a vocal audio track and a master fader. If you look at the top of each channel strip, you can see that inserts A through E are visible. If you're not seeing these, you can go to the View menu, choose Mix Window Views, and enable inserts A through E. Let's start by taking a look at plugin inserts. Plugins are software signal processors that can be placed on any of the available inserts in your Pro Tools session. For example, if we wanted to add an EQ to this track, we simply click on one of the available insert points, go to the Plugin submenu, EQ, and then we'll choose the EQ37 band, which is one of the free plugins included with every Pro Tools system. Now if I go ahead and start playback, the signal will be routed through the plugin insert. If I want to add another insert to the track, I simply click on another available insert point, and this time we'll go ahead and choose Dynamics and insert a BF76. It's important to note here that the signal flow will pass through the inserts in series from top to bottom. So in this case, the signal will pass through the EQ37 band and then go through the BF76. If I want the Dynamics processor to come before the EQ, I can simply click and drag it to a higher insert point and now the signal will pass through the BF76 before it reaches the EQ3. Note that all of the plugins on an audio track are pre-fader. This means that even if I move the volume fader on the track, the signal level going to the plugin is not changed. This is true for all tracks in Pro Tools that are not master faders. Next, we'll take a look at hardware inserts. If I go to my I.O. setup by clicking on the setup menu and choosing I.O., and then click on the Insert tab, you'll see that I have an outboard EQ processor configured as a hardware insert. Note that when using a hardware insert, the input and output number must be the same. For example, here, the signal will be routed out on output number one and returned on input number one. Then to assign this hardware insert to a track, I simply click an available insert point, and instead of choosing a plugin, I'll go to I.O., and there I can choose my EQ. Here you can see that unlike a plugin interface, the hardware insert has virtually no controls. So let's take a look at what's actually happening here. Once the hardware insert has been inserted on the track, the signal will be sent to physical output number one. From there, I'll route the signal into my external EQ processor. Then the output of the EQ processor will be routed back into input number one on the interface. And from there, the signal is returned back to the insert on the track. Assuming everything is configured properly, I can insert the outboard EQ processor just like I would a plugin. Next, let's take a look at inserts on master faders. The master fader has several typical uses in Pro Tools. The most common is to control the level of your final mix output, but it's also quite useful for applying processing across the entire mix. To do this, I simply click on one of the available insert points, and in this case, I'll go to a multi-channel plugin, and then I'll choose a dynamics processor, like Avid's Pro Limiter, in order to maximize levels across my entire mix. Note that inserts on master faders are always post fader. This means that adjusting the level on the master fader's volume fader will actually change the signal level that's being sent to the inserted plugins. Normally this won't have much impact on your session, but there are times, like creating a fade out at the end of a song, where the plugin processing will be impacted. So that's a basic look at using inserts on audio tracks and master faders in Pro Tools.